Thank you. Thank you very much. That is some enthusiastic crowd. Thank you. One of the most beautiful places on Earth. Thank you very much. As you might have heard earlier today, the FBI after discovering new emails, is reopening their investigation into Hillary Clinton. I have great respect for the FBI for righting this wrong. The American people fully understand her corruption, and we hope all, all, justice will finally be served. This is the biggest political scandal since Watergate, and I'm sure that it will be properly handled from this point forward. Thank you. Now getting back to things that don't sound quite as exciting, but they're so important, right? In 11 days, we're going to win the state of Maine. And we are going to win back the White House. We're going to have honest government once again. Hillary bleached and deleted 33,000 emails after receiving a congressional subpoena. That's after. Remember that. After. And lied to Congress under oath about her illegal server. She put her office up for sale to large corporations and foreign powers and special interests. All the while, the world fell apart. She unleashed ISIS, put Iran on a path to nuclear weapons, and threw the Middle East into total turmoil. It's time for new leadership, and it's time for good judgment. Time for good judgment. We will lower taxes, raise incomes, renegotiate our terrible trade deals, and unleash the power of American energy, including the production of shale, oil, natural gas, and clean coal. My reforms on taxes, regulation, trade, and American energy will create 25 million new jobs in a decade and achieve 4 percent growth. And you folks could use it. Is that right? We could use it up there. It's all outlined in detail in my contract with America and American voters. I'll tell you what, we have the greatest people on Earth. That's one thing I have learned so strongly by doing this large scale every state. I'm going to every state, and I love it. And I love the people of our country. I love the people of our country. My 100-day pledge to make our government honest our economy prosperous, and our country safe. Early voting is underway, so make sure you get out and vote. Who's voted? Oh. Everybody. Goodbye, folks. You've already voted. We don't have to speak anymore. You've all voted. Wow. That's great. That's great. That's really amazing. Real change begins with immediately repealing and replacing Obamacare. It has just been announced that Americans are experiencing another massive double-digit hike in Obamacare and premiums. Now, this was announced by Washington, and believe me, the number they gave, around 25 percent, is peanuts, peanuts compared to the real numbers. In the great state of Arizona, a place I love, they are going to have a hike of 116 percent. Even Bill Clinton admitted Obamacare is the craziest thing in the world, where people wind up with premiums doubled what 
they ever thought doubled. And their coverage is cut in half. In Minnesota, where the premium increase will be close to 60 percent, the Democratic governor has said the Affordable Care Act is no longer affordable. Jonathan Gruber, you remember him? The architect of Obamacare admitted it was all a fraud, and he said it was passed because of the stupidity of the American voter. Ah. But the only stupidity was that of the officials who rammed through this horrible, horrible law over the objections of the American voter. And he's right. Very few people, if anybody, I mean, almost nobody read it. Who said that? Very smart. They didn't read it. They don't read anything. They don't read trade deals. I'll tell you what they don't read. They don't read NAFTA. They don't read TPP. Job-killing Obamacare is just one more way the system is rigged. Hillary Clinton wants to double down on Obamacare, making it even more expensive. It's no good, folks. And it's too expensive by far. But it's no good. It's no good. Your deductibles, it doesn't work. Repealing and replacing Obamacare is one of the single most important reasons we must win on November 8th. Real change also means getting rid of the corruption in Washington. My contract with the American voter begins with a plan to take our government back from the donors and the special interests, and maybe these folks right back here, the corrupt media. The corrupt media. I want the entire corrupt Washington establishment to hear and heed our words, not my words, our words. If we win on November 8th, we are going to win. When we win on November 8th, we are going to Washington, D.C., and we are going to drain the swamp. I tell people, I didn't like that expression, that phrase. But everybody else did in the whole world. It's all over the world now. It's trending. They come up, Mr. Trump, Drain the swamp is trending. Drain that swamp. It's trending. I said, really? All of a sudden, you start to like it. You know, Frank Sinatra was really sort of a friend of mine, in a sense. And he didn't like my way. But he got to like it after singing it for about two times <laughs> when it went to number one. You know, so you never know. But it certainly is a proper description, isn't it? My ethics reform and the plan include the following. A constitutional amendment that imposes term limits on all members of Congress. A five-year ban on White House and congressional officials becoming lobbyists. A complete ban on lobbyists raising money for American elections. And remember, and that's of the foreign variety. Do we want foreign lobbyists raising money? Tell me about that. No more. At the core of my contract is my plan to bring our jobs back home. Okay? We're living through the greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. It really is. The greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. Maine has lost. What a place, though. What a place. You talk about land. Good land. Beautiful land. Maine has lost 38 percent of its manufacturing jobs since NAFTA. And China trade deals went into effect. Think of that, 38 percent. And they were approved by Bill Clinton, supported heavily by Hillary Clinton. Right here in Maine, the paper industry in Maine 
is taking a tremendous hit. Do we all know about that? So what's the problem? Huh? Foreign competition, right? Maine's paper industry has lost more than 1,500 jobs in the past two years. What's going on? And 2,300 jobs since 2011. We've lost, as a country, 70,000 factories since China entered the World Trade Organization. And you know what that is. That was another Bill and Hillary Clinton-backed fiasco. After promising she would oppose it, Hillary also pushed through a deal, and it's a trade deal with South Korea. That was a deal that was devastating to the paper industry. You know all about it. And it killed over 100,000 jobs nationwide. She told the voters, she told everybody it was going to be a good deal. Did the same thing in New York State. She said she's going to bring jobs back to New York State. You're close enough to New York to know that didn't work. Next, Hillary wants the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which will kill millions more jobs. The TPP, well, they're looking at her properly now. The only thing I can say. The only thing I can say. It's a tough, tough situation that our country is going through, that I can tell you. The TPP would result in the closure of Maine shoe factories and the loss of so many other jobs. Who works at a shoe factory? Anybody here? Said they're mostly gone. Is that right? They're mostly gone. You mean, if I would have said 10 years ago, people would have raised their hands. All right, we'll bring them back. We're going to bring, I'll tell you what, we're going to bring our jobs back. Now, how's that for an answer? I say, who works at a shoe factory? And the guy shouts out, they're all gone. As part of my contract, we will stop the TPP, and we will renegotiate NAFTA, and we will terminate NAFTA if we don't get the deal we want and replace it with a fair deal and a good deal for American workers. Also, at the center of our jobs plan is tax reform. You don't mind having lower taxes, do you, anybody? My contract calls for lowering taxes on our businesses from 35 percent down to 15 percent. We're the highest tax nation in the world. And that's one of the reasons, a prime reason, why our companies are all leaving. One of the highest taxed nations in the world, just about the highest, and we're going to be one of the lower taxed. Not the lowest, but close. It cuts taxes for the middle-class families by 35 percent. We will become a rich nation again. So important. I tell the story. This wonderful woman came up to me after a speech, said, I love you, Mr. Trump. I love your speeches. I think everything is great. But could you please stop saying we're going to be a rich nation again? It sounds so crass. And I said, you know what? We have no choice. We've got to be. We owe right now. How much, how many, how many trillion do we owe? I just want, it's exactly right. And how much has it been increased since Obama became president? Right? It doubled. It doubled. In eight years, less than eight years, it doubled. And I said, I'm sorry, but to do what we have to do, which is to build up our military, to take care of our vets, to take care of your Social Security without cuts. To do the things we have to do. I'm sorry, ma'am, we have to become a rich nation again. And she said, well, I understand. It just doesn't sound good. And that's the old story, politically correct. Forget about politically correct, okay? But to be a rich nation again, we must also be a safe nation. Hillary Clinton unleashed ISIS onto the world and it spread all over America. There are now 1,000 open ISIS investigations going on as we speak in the United States. We have seen — she doesn't like her too much. A lot of people agree with you. We have seen attacks in San Bernardino, California, at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, all over. I mean, the World Trade Center, we've seen, too. 
We've seen attacks in Paris. We've seen attacks in Nice. We've seen attacks in Germany. We're seeing attacks all over the world. And we don't want to be the stupid people. And we've had it. We lose our jobs. We allow people to come into our country. We know nothing about what their thought process is, where they come from, what they want to do. We're going to build the wall, and Mexico is going to pay for the wall. Believe me. We'll build the wall, and Mexico will pay for it. Believe me. And we're going to stop the drugs from pouring in through our southern border and poisoning your children, and poisoning a lot more than your children. You know, the Border Patrol agents, 16,500 plus ICE, tremendous number. They endorsed me. First time they've ever endorsed. These are great people. By the way, they are so mistreated. They are great people. They want to do their job right. You know, it's much harder. Their job is much harder if I win, because we're going to have them do their job. Right now, they just have to stand there, let everyone walk right by him. And I was amazed, because they came and they endorsed me. I didn't solicit it. I didn't know they could even do it. Maybe they can't do it, but they felt they had to do it. These are great people. They want to do their job. One of the things I said to them, I said, tell me about the wall. Really important. They said, Mr. Trump, you have no idea how important. They want drugs to stop coming into our country. But you look at New Hampshire, you look at yourselves, you look at so many, I mean, almost, almost every state. And I learned most about it from New Hampshire, because when I, you know, I won New Hampshire, and I really got to know the people. And they said that drugs, the biggest problem they have, heroin, addicting, their populace. And really, they mentioned their children. But it's, it's far more than the young people. It's people. It's everybody. And they said this, and I learned so much. It was incredible. And I made the statement to them, but I made it to everybody, that if we win, we're going to stop that crap from coming into our country. We're going to stop it. And we're going to work with the people who are so addicted and we're going to try like hell to get them off that addiction. Such a problem. Such a problem. So we're going to build a wall, and Mexico is going to pay for the wall, okay? Just don't even think about it. And the agents, when they endorsed me, I said, is it important? They said, because I wanted a little reaffirmation. And they said, Mr. Trump, so important. You have no idea so important, you need it. And it made me feel good. Because frankly, if they said we didn't need it, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know what I would have done. But we do need it, and it's going to happen, and we're going to stop the drugs from coming in. And we're going to have people come into our country. A lot of people come into our We're going to have big, beautiful doors, OK? We're going to have a lot of people come into our country, but they're going to come into our country legally, legally, OK? Hillary wants massive immigration from the most dangerous regions of the world where ISIS operates, including, she wants, a 550 percent increase in Syrian refugees over and above the thousands and thousands that are already coming into our country. We don't want ISIS in our country. ISIS is coming in through — and she knows this. She made a statement. You know, she made a statement that ISIS is coming in through the refugees. She knows it. The Hillary refugee plan <laughs> would leave us with generations of terrorism, radicalism, and extremism inside of our shores. And there's no question about that. Take a look at what's happening in Germany. Take a look at what's happening to some of these countries. It's a whole different place. I have a friend who used to go to Paris. Love Paris. I said to him recently, how is Paris this summer? He said, we don't go to Paris. He said, Paris is no longer Paris, which is obviously true. I only want to admit people who will support this country and love its people. That's what I want. <laughs> Keeping our family safe is the highest obligation of the President of the United States. A Trump administration is going to suspend immigration from terror-prone regions and will suspend 
the Syrian refugee program. We have no choice. And by the way, we have heart. You have heart. I have heart. Big heart. But we're going to build safe havens, and we're going to have the Gulf states plenty of money. So much money. So much money they have. And they haven't done their job. They're going to pay for it. We're not going to pay for it. We owe $2 trillion. We have $20 trillion. We're not — we're not doing it, okay? We're not doing it. We're going to have beautiful, safe havens. They're going to pay for it. We want to take care of the people. But we can't have people that we know nothing about coming into our country. I talk and I tell the story of the great Trojan horse. We're not going to be a modern-day Trojan horse, that I can tell you. We are not taking risks when it comes to the safety of the American people. We have enough problems, folks, in case you don't know. Does anybody think we don't have any problems? Boy, do we have problems. So let me state this as clearly as I can. If I'm elected president, I am going to keep — when I'm elected — When, when, when. I am going to keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. <laughs> Hillary also said she wants totally open borders. A Trump administration will secure and defend the borders of the United States. And yes, we will build that wall. Countless Americans who have died in recent years would be alive today if not for the open border policies of this administration. This includes incredible Americans like 21-year-old Sarah Root, who you probably read about. The man who killed her arrived at the border, entered through federal custody, and then was released into the United States community under the policies, the horrible, weak, and disgusting policies of this White House. He was released again and again, crime after crime, and is now at large. Sarah graduated from college with a 4.0, top in her class. And it was the day after, the day after college, the day after, killed beautiful Sarah Root. And I got to know her family, and they're incredible people, and they're devastated. And frankly, they'll never be — even with time, they'll never be the same. First in her class, right after graduation, also among the victims of Obama-Clinton open borders policy was Grant Ronebeck, a 21-year-old convenience store clerk from Mesa, Arizona. He was murdered by an illegal immigrant gang member, previously convicted, very violent, of burglary, and was also released from federal custody. Now, the people that knew him, the people that knew this person, said, Please don't release him. He's violent. He's a criminal. Please don't release him. They released him, and he killed Grant instantaneously, almost immediately. Another victim is Kate Steinle. You know that, from San Francisco, gunned down, sanctuary city by an illegal immigrant deported five previous times. Kate Steinle, gun gunned down holding the hand of her father, looking at how beautiful the Golden Gate Bridge was, right? Gunned down in the back. Then there is the case of 90-year-old Earl Olander, who was brutally beaten and left to bleed to death in his home. The perpetrators were illegal immigrants with criminal records a mile long who did not meet the Obama administration's priorities for removal, even though other people were saying, please, please, get these people incarcerated or get them out. In California, a 64-year-old Air Force veteran, Marilyn Ferris, was raped and beaten to death with a hammer. Her killer had been arrested on multiple occasions, was a violent, violent person, but was never deported. Now, we've had so many. We know they're bad. We know bad things are going to happen, but they don't do their jobs. They don't do their jobs. This is going to be the opposite of a Trump administration, that I can tell you. This crime wave will end 
when I'm president. We will also repeal the Obama-Clinton defense cuts and rebuild our badly depleted military. You know, we have — you probably saw this on television, documentaries — we have fighter jets that are so old, we can't even get parts for them. They get parts from museums and parts from plain graveyards. You can't even get parts. And our great young people are flying these jets. They're so old. And, I mean, the enemy has better planes than we do. And in many cases, they got them from us. It's all going to change. That includes rebuilding our badly depleted Navy, which is now the smallest it has been since World War I. My plan builds the 350 ship Navy we need, and everybody is requesting. And that means a lot more work for you. I'm sure you've never heard of this place. Bath Iron Works here in Maine. Right? right? Hey, you've heard of it. I thought — I maybe thought — Maybe I thought you would have never heard of Beth. The rebuilding of our military will be a nationwide effort from Beth Ironworks of Portsmouth and Norfolk Naval Shipyards to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and all around the country. All around the country. We're building here, folks, just in case — just in case you had any questions. We also need a new foreign policy that puts America first, a term you haven't even heard until I came along. Hillary wants to start a shooting war in Syria in conflict with a nuclear-armed Russia, which could lead very much to World War III. That's wonderful. Wonderful. She wants to get into World War III over Syria. Great. To all Americans, I say, it is now time for new leadership. Just for those that want to know a sad fact. So we have spent, right now, as of now, $6 trillion — $6 trillion in the Middle East. We could have rebuilt our country twice. And the Middle East right now is in far worse shape than it was 15 years ago when we started this monster. We unleashed this monster. So think of it, $6 trillion we've spent. And forget that, the deaths. The deaths. So we've gotten death. We've gotten debt. We've gotten tremendous amounts of money spent. And what do we have? We have a place that's a hundred times worse than it was 15 years ago. And now it's a mess. And by the way, we have no choice. We will stop ISIS so strongly, so quickly. And when we attack, we will not be giving them advance notice, okay? You see what's going on. You see what's going on. Advance notice. We're going into Mosul in four months. No, we're going in in three months. We will be attacking Mosul from the back and then the front, and then we'll go — these people. General George Patton is spinning in his grave, right? Spinning in his grave. And by the way, we have a great general with us, General Flynn, General Mike Flynn. Where is he? General Mike. Come here, Mike. Come here. Come here. Wow. 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 Woo! USA, baby. USA. Hey, this — this election is about the heart and soul of the United States of America, and that's why I'm standing up here for Donald J. Trump to be the next President of the United States. Ah, oh, he's good.
They might not like him that much because he's a little too tough, you know. <laughs> See, uh, General MacArthur, General Patton, guys like Mike, General Kellogg, we have such great people with us. We have over 200 generals and admirals supporting us. Can you imagine that? Endorsing us. We have, we have 21 congressional medal, congressional medal of honor recipients, 21 endorsing us. These are incredible people. We have unbelievable people endorsing us, including a lot of the folks that have given me medals and they've given me their medals. I said, don't take it, don't take it, don't do it, keep it. Mr. Trump, we want you to have them. We want These are the most unbelievable people. These are the most unbelievable people we have in our country. Just think what we can accomplish in our first 100 days. We're going to have the biggest tax cut since Ronald Reagan. We're going to eliminate every unnecessary job-killing regulation. That's a big deal, I want to tell you. It's a big deal. The business people would rather have that than the tax cut. We're going to remove the burdens of American small business. I mean, we are — you have to see the burden of these regulations the burden of these regulations on small business and big business are unbelievable. And we're not going to get our jobs back unless we unleash our companies. We're going to make child care affordable and very much more affordable. We'll provide school choice, and we are going to put an end to Common Core. We're going to have education local. We're going to rebuild our military. We have the greatest people in the world in our military, very depleted. We are going to take care of our great veterans. They have been treated horribly. We will reduce surging crime and support the men and women of law enforcement. I don't know if you know, and you've been hearing it, but you've been hearing it only from me because they won't tell you. The murder rate in the United States is the highest it's been in 45 years. Nobody hears that. They don't tell you that. They'll never tell you that. We're going to save our Second Amendment, which is under siege, like you wouldn't believe. And we're going to appoint, so importantly, justices to the United States Supreme Court who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. Very important. Americans are tired of being told by politicians that they have to defer their dreams to another day. But really, you and I know that means another decade and many decades, in fact, if we keep going along like we are right now. It's like our politics are caught in a great time warp we keep electing the same people who keep making the same mistakes and who keep offering the same old, tired excuses. These career politicians, like Hillary Clinton, keep telling us that things can't change, that we can't try new solutions. Hillary wants us to think small, wants us to believe things that can't change, and wants our lives to revolve around Washington, D.C. And you're right. She's been telling things for 30 years, nothing happens. When she talks about the tax code, I say, why didn't you change it? When she talks about the military, I say, why didn't you do something about it? It's all talk. It's all talk. When she talks about, I will stop jobs from leaving, where have you been? She's been a senator, she's been a secretary. It's all talk. And take a look at her record as a senator. And take a look at her record as Secretary of State. It's a disaster. I'm asking you to dream big, to push for bold change, and to believe in a movement powered by the people and by their love for this country. That's this movement. I have a message for all doubters in Washington. 
The future belongs to the dreamers, not the cynics and the critics. We are fighting for every citizen who believes that government should serve the people, not the donors and not the special interests. And by the way, just in case you didn't know this, I did very well on the other side. I knew the other side very well. I also love this country, and I saw that this country truly was headed in the wrong direction and may be irretrievable. So this is a lot of work. It's not easy. We had 17 people. Now we have one left. But we are going to make America great again, believe me. We're fighting to bring all Americans together. It's a divided country. We're going to bring them together. Just imagine what our country could accomplish if we started working together as one people, under one God, saluting one American flag. Once again, we will have a government of, by, and for the people. Together, we will make America wealthy again. Get out and vote November 8th for about the three people that haven't voted. By the way, who hasn't? So tell me something. Who has not? You haven't voted and you're in the front. You're fired. No, you haven't. You're going to vote, right? Okay. There is saying, yes, yes, I promise, I promise. Not too many people. Who else? Who has not voted? All right. So most have voted. Get out and vote. Or this movement, this great movement that everybody's talking about. And it's a movement of common sense. It's a movement of winning. Let's win again. We don't win anymore. Get out of vote. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again, I promise. God bless you, everybody. God bless you, Maine. God bless you. Get out and vote. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.